Good evening, everybody. It's 7 o'clock, so we're going to get started. Uh, we've got two hearings scheduled for tonight, uh, but before we get into that, we have the public comment section of the evening. So is there anybody here who wants to discuss anything uh, other than the two items that are up for review tonight? If you do, just put your hand up. If not, we'll get started. So, uh, yeah, let's do, uh, we've got a new member tonight, um, Dan Felton. Welcome. Thank you. Um, why don't we go around the the table and introduce Dan to everybody. Hi, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> We've met. <laughs> Frandy Johnson. And Devin Bruce. Hi. And Dan, I missed your last name. Felton. Felton. And we're missing missing three tonight. So one we're expecting, one we're not sure of. So we'll keep you posted on that, but welcome. And um, this will this be a good night to, to ease into this won't be a 1 a.m. We don't think a 1 a.m. hearing. So, but we'll see. You never know. So, the first uh, hearing we have is scheduled for 7 o'clock. It's a site plan review for AT&T Wireless for new antennas on an existing tower at 790 Florence Road. Florence Map ID 37-077. We've got a quick presentation. Hello, my name is Brian Allen, KJK Wireless. I represent the applicant, New Singular Wireless PCS LLC, otherwise known as AT&T. Um, AT&T is looking to continually improve coverage in Northampton. Uh, in order to do so, we are looking to place antennas on uh, an existing tower that's owned by Comcast. Uh, at 790 Florence Road. Uh, essentially, our proposal is to put antennas near the top of the tower, set down so that the tops of the antennas match with the top of the tower, so they're not increasing the height of the tower. Uh, at the base of the tower, uh, there's currently a fenced-in compound and parking area that Comcast uses for their own uses. We're looking to expand that uh, in order to place our equipment in a separate fenced area with a little bit of additional parking. Uh, actually, more like a turnaround space and parking or access space to uh, that fenced area. I provided plans uh, which you received and I sent over photo simulations uh, which I believe were distributed which show uh, before and simulated uh, those very very well depict what's going to see, uh, and they do a good job of finding out which locations to, to take the photo. And I'm going to answer any questions in terms of numbers or the reason why we need a tower, but those of you who have AT&T will realize that we don't have very good coverage in that area. Uh, we're currently working on another site, which is in the construction phase, uh, approved at Smith College in the Helen Hills Chapel and that will provide coverage in this area, and this will cover uh, a different section of town. So combined, those will provide very good coverage in the area. You're renting space on the tower? Yes. Uh, basically, it's a commercial lease. Mm -hmm. uh, the tower is owned by Comcast or one of their underlying entities, and it's managed by a company called CTI Tower. We have negotiated a lease for space on the tower and space down at the bottom for our equipment <coughs> shelter. So this just is increasing the <coughs> distance of coverage? It's going to be completely new coverage uh, in that area. So we have a couple towers in town. Um, I could go over which ones those are. You're probably familiar with uh, Glendale Road. That's the dump, I believe. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, King Street in the parking lot of the mall. Atwood Drive. Um, and then the, the, the chapel. Uh, and then we have a couple in the surrounding areas which provide coverage into town, but this is, gonna, this is a nice site. It complements what we have and provides a, a good, robust coverage in that area. This is the tower that you can see as you're coming up from East Hampton on Florence Road, it's the orange, painted orange and white? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's on top of some hill or other? It's on top of the hill above a couple of those co-housing areas? Yep. Um, and you can kind of see it from the golf course as well. Uh, the, the easiest spot is when you're coming up over that crest, you can see it in the distance, uh, kind of to the right of Orange Road. Are there any other existing cell uh, antennas on there now? There are no cell antennas on there. Uh, the current 
providers, which would be 18, uh, our competitors, a lot of them are on the site at the golf course, which is a little to the south. Uh, that tower has a lot of stuff on it, so we would be lower on that site. Uh, this one is preferable for us. It provides better coverage in that area. Yep. Um, I know in some towns you've gotten gone through this process and then not activated the tower. Are you sure you're going to do that one to this tower? Unfortunately, uh, I don't have the money. You know, I'm not the money guy. So we're, I'm tasked with finding a, a good location. Uh, we've already leased it. I think we're already paying rent. So it's just a matter of time before uh, they turn the sites on. Uh, I know Smith College, we worked on that because that was an important site for us and is, I believe, currently in construction. So, you know, this area, I've done a number of these sites. We have a site in uh, Southampton, which we have permitted on College Highway, right on the border. Uh, we have East Hampton, I believe. And that one, once again, is you know, kind of in process. It takes a little while, and then once they get them up, they have to integrate them into the network so that the coverage actually works. So AT&T has been actively building out this area, and I've been the person who's kind of driving around and, and finding these sites. Um, so I, if I were to guess, I would say AT&T would get their permits and build this in the spring. Um, but okay. I, you know, that's, that's as much as I know on my end as a you know, kind of guy out on the street. A question, the equipment shelter? Yes. With the generator inside, is that, is that an acoustic, uh, does it have any acoustic properties, the shelter, or is the generator yeah. cycle every week? We or how does that? to um, CTI, who manages the site, and the Comcast engineers. And we had mentioned that you know, we would have a, gen a generator there for emergency use uh, that cycles you know, once a week for half an hour or something to make sure it works. They have a generator on site, and they said, hey, you know, probably not good to have two generators there if we don't have to, but we won't share ours with you. Is there any way you can make it sound less? So we said, well, we can use this one shelter that puts it essentially in a concrete bunker. So the, the, the generator is inside the building, which allows for the noise reduction uh, and allows for fuel containment because mm -hmm. it's a diesel generator. So the fuel pan is inside the generator, inside the building. So if there's any leaks, it's still inside a concrete bunker. So, you know, the cat, there's huge catchment levels. And, you know, having done many sites here in Northampton, I figured I would just start with that because it would be a request that you would make anyway. Right. Okay. So it's, it's a real nice one uh, in terms of, you know, it's a you know, six, eight inch thick concrete building with everything housed inside. So all you have is, is the exhaust and the air intake. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board? Open up to the public. Anyone in the public wants to speak to this? No? It seems pretty straightforward. I mean, the tower is already there. If the tower wasn't there, it would be a different discussion. No, I mean, it's existing tower. I mean, so typically for new towers, you want to get a um, performance guarantee that the, if they stop using it, that they'll take the equipment down. But since they don't own the tower and mm -hmm. you know, the lease arrangements, I'm sure, address that. I don't think it's really necessary to have a separate bond mm -hmm. or anything for that. All right. Can I move to close the public hearing? Second. Second, Ann. All in favor? Any discussion? Like I say, the, the tower's there, so. Yeah. It's well, <laughs> and I would have been interested if somebody had come to complain about it. Right. I drove by it today. There's not, it's just. You can barely see it. Exactly. Right. Um, I move we approve site plan for AT&T wireless new antennas on existing towers at 790 Florence Road, Florence Map ID 37-077. Second. I'll give that one to Fandy. All in favor? Okay. Thank you very Seth. much. Thank you. Now we have to kill solar the moon. <laughs> we got, we got some minutes to look. I wonder if he knows about solar block. There's a, a new product on the market. You can build concrete buildings that are solar collectors. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. It's called solar block. Solar block. You mean they store heat or they store electricity? Electricity. 
Yeah. Yeah. Solar doesn't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's a great idea for that little concrete building. It's like more of a bomb God shelter. God from UMass than a, just got the patent. It's concrete walls, There's concrete. Trees all around up there. <clears throat> Uh, we have six minutes to kill, so do we've got two sets of minutes to look at in um, the last two months. First up is October 24th. I move we approve the minutes of October 24th. Second in. All in favor? There's one. Second are the minutes from November 14th. I move we approve the minutes of September 14th for consistency. Second. <laughs> Okay. That didn't kill six minutes. Thirty seconds. Well, such good news. Kayla, what do you have for us? <laughs> well, um, this might take longer than <laughs> than five minutes. Than five minutes. Um, but there was one other thing I, I added to the agenda that I'd like to add to the agenda, just to s initiate the conversation. And so we probably need to take more time, but maybe I'll just, I'm just inserting it now so you guys know. Um, a prequel. Right. So remember when the residential zoning passed and there were a bunch of things still on the bucket mm -hmm. list that had to be taken care of? I'm still working on, I've got some more feedback about issues to potentially address in the design for larger projects, but I'm not quite ready to... I haven't quite pulled everything together and looked at other ordinances around the country to give to you guys to evaluate and sort of think about. So while that sort of cooking along, um, we decided to internally take a crack at the URA issue. Um, so I have a marked up map of options that you guys might want to think about moving forward to in the, in the spring, because I think some of them are kind of no-brainers, mm -hmm. at least to start the conversation. Mm -hmm before going out to public for public comment, but just sort of to get it, um, sort of moving in that direction, deciding which way you might want to lead in terms of public, uh, where to take the public, or start the public comment um, on those, so we can look at that map. Um, but I don't think, I mean, you can unroll it and show it to you now, but you might foster a lot of different questions, so we might want to leave it to the end, but okay. I just wanted to let you know about that. Okay. Um, and the other thing that I added onto the agenda was another minor amendment that I want to put out there that was raised by the building um, commissioner, actually, relative to now the zoning allows mul multiple different types of structures on one parcel, which we didn't allow before. And so um, um, Louis noted that perhaps we want to add a um, site plan threshold anytime you're adding a new residential unit to an existing lot mm -hmm. because now right now single family homes are not allowed or are allowed by right mm -hmm. and so if someone already has a two a single two three family on a parcel and they want to add an additional unit um, that would be considered a single family if it's just one unit so that wouldn't in its in and of itself trigger site plan I don't know if this is going to be an issue if you think that's important to do or if it's really more beyond a 2,000 square foot threshold you want to see the, um, the construction. But it's just something to sort of um, think about. And then how that corresponds to our current requirement of Zoning Board of Appeals special permit for any detached accessory apartment. So what's the difference between mm -hmm. a detached accessory apartment and mm -hmm a self-contained single family unit. I mean, right, right now, by definition, it's 900 square feet as a threshold, but that one already requires Zoning Board of Appeals special permit. But now under this new ordinance, we don't require special permit. So it's kind of just cleaning up yeah. that language and deciding what makes sense. Okay. Um, so probably and not did again. Did we bring that up because it's, has it has he has it, has it come across his desk where there's a conflict or a potential conflict? It's or come he just across his well in conversations with people sort of floating different ideas about how they might be able to add units to their property. We've been we he's decided that you know even if you already have an existing property or structure on a property, that any time you're going to add one self-contained unit that's detached, that would be that would qualify as a single family. And so under. Um, even though it's on the same parcel as something else, as another structure, principal structure. So he was concerned that someone might, I guess the biggest concern would be someone might 
stagger a project and do serial single family units and never come through a site plan review. No. So, you know, if your lot is big enough, you could come in with one and then next year come in with one. Right. And then you haven't looked at the big picture of how it all works together, what the egress <coughs> is and the parking. So I guess that was sort of a red flag in his mind that, well, do we need to set something that's clear about how we do those things? Right. So um, I think it deserves discussion. And then the other question is, is that something that's important enough to move forward right now or wait till we address this other um, package of large unit projects that are now currently under a mor moratorium? So. Okay. Was he thinking about this theoretically or in relationship to things that actually are attempting to go on the ground? Um, theoretically, but it was triggered by something that might be a real project, but then sort of taking that the next step. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's talk about that after. Okay. We'll talk about that after this. Uh, we've got our second hearing scheduled for 7:15. It's a site plan from PQI Group. Five for single or for five single family house lots on the Danny Drive, Northampton map IDs 38A 135 and 31C 35. So we've got a presentation, I imagine. Good evening, I'm Lawrence Lloyd, uh, representing the Pequoy groups. Uh, Pequoy group. um, we had Asked for permission to subdivide two lots adjacent to some homes that we are already building at uh, Moser Way Village Hill. They're lots A22 and A27 uh, into five lots on those two lots. Before we uh, talk about that, however, it's my understanding that the board has some questions relative to uh, density issues there uh, from the original permitting. So I think it's probably best if we discuss that first. Uh, we have asked Beth Murphy of Mass Development to join us tonight, who was part of the original permitting process there. So uh, I'd like to ask the questions. We're prepared to answer those. I think the biggest question is, is why is this a site plan review versus a special permit review if the initial special permit that was granted called for a higher density in this area, which would imply that need a special permit because we're you're effectively changing what was proposed originally for these laws. I might as well then address that issue right up front. Uh, the special permit references a conceptual master plan. Uh, and that's what it is. It's conceptual. It's not definitive. So Similar to what you use. That's this, right? <coughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Japan, the North Employees Home exists. We've got the Memorial Park up here. We've got townhouses down here. This is this lot and this lot are the subject of tonight's hearing. Um, and that's, you know, what's there. And it was just as a guide, not a definitive plan. What you see over here is where we're at now. Um, You'll notice in this area here where the Beechwood homes have been built out, six Beechwood homes, uh, there were 16 townhouses proposed in that area. Um, again, 
This was done by our architect planner. This is the actual when the developer comes in as to what they can build. It takes into account drainage, it takes into account driveway access, it takes into account um, what the market is looking for um, as it's supposed to. So it's the difference between, you know, thinking about it broadly and providing a framework as to actually getting out there, doing the engineering, doing the marketing, uh, finding developers who do high quality development that are compatible with what's already there. Um, and here you see the difference between this and what's being proposed tonight. There are three single family homes as opposed to what's shown on here is six townhouses and there are two single family homes as opposed to two singles or uh, duplexes down here. And um, so what I handed out to you, where did I get, where did the extra packet go? <laughs> um, you can flip through the first two pages. So I'll show you the two different master plans, the conceptual um, and the actual to date. And then the first thing you come to is uh, the original PCOI proposal to us, which wanted to do four uh, single families instead of three on that lot. And we asked them to get rid of one lot because there's a pathway that needs to come through here. And the pathway exists right here, and we want to continue it pretty much in a straight line through. And we don't want to crowd it. Um, we don't want to push it over uh, too close to the TCB building. We want it to have a natural flow and be the, the natural axis that it was anticipated to be. And the next thing I show you is some sketches that we did in-house where um, Willow Visco, who some of you may know, uh, tried to put the four lots back there by moving the pathway over onto the TCB property. But uh, that's not, again, it's just the pathway then goes at a, an angle at a very short distance. Um, and we don't think that's a good design solution. I mean, frankly, mass development would rather sell four lots than three, but it, it doesn't do the overall plan any good. It doesn't uh, really contribute to the aesthetic of the design. The next thing that Italo sketched out for you was a uh, townhouses. And you'll see that you can really only fit four townhouses in this location. Because again, what the, the concept planner wasn't taking into account that you need a garage for each townhouse. That's what the market demands. So, uh, Italo put the, the garage there and created the parking and uh, one car garage, one parking space. And you could fit a four unit uh, townhouse there. And you can also see another version of that where he's pulled the path back on, but it's, it's a townhouse development. And then the last is simply his sketch of what PCOI is already submitted. Um, so the overall point that I want to make is that they, this plan never has been literal. It has always been conceptual. And it has always allowed us to rearrange things to uh, take in, into account the realities on the ground, the soil content, um, the uh, developers who are available and willing and capable of, of working on this site. Um, and so, and, and I'm, frankly, that has been, that kind of flexibility has been the strength of the master plan. And nowhere in the special permit does it treat the concept master plan as definitive, saying you must put six of this type of house in this location. And in fact, when these plans were presented to the CAC, there were numerous alternative plans that moved housing types around. And it was always understood 
that this was not, you know, set in stone. That if there was more demand for housing, we prefer higher density. If it can be done, if it can be supported by uh, the soil types, the access, the drainage, we certainly support higher density. But we also support realism about what can actually be built. And so, um, I don't know if, you have, if that answers your question or if there's further questions. I think for me, I, it, it, I follow where you're coming from, but the master plan was always a concept. It was always a guide. It wasn't definitive. I get that. But that's all that the planning board had at the time to approve. And so, at its core, the concept was high density in the middle and family, single family on the perimeter. And what's happened over the years, it's been difficult when individual projects come in front of us that on their own merits are fine, but taken as a whole, they erode what the master plan purported to be, which was high density in the middle. And, and what we've done over the years is we've gotten away from that master plan. And I think this is just another step further away from where we thought we we're gonna be at the beginning. If you just let me, this has changed to this mm -hmm. based on what this site can actually support. You could squeeze another unit in there, uh, either through townhouses or single families. We've added two units over here. I mean, and that's, there's nothing there on this plan. So the central concept of density in that core has not been affected. We're, you're going from six of these units, which could not be built, <laughs> to five units here and three, two here and three here. So that central density, you're talking the difference of one unit, it doesn't- On that lot, but this is on the heels of a, of a previous development that certainly took the density down from what it was, correct? What it was Beachwood? Yeah. But this issue was never raised with Beachwood. Again, on its own merits, every, these, it's, it's, hard, it's been difficult for us to look on the picture as a whole because we don't know what the whole picture is. So all we can go back to is what we thought it was going to be, the way it was pitched th at the beginning. And now as these pieces are starting to come together, we realize we're, we're getting away from that. And it's, and it's this, I thought this doesn't get us any closer in my, in my opinion. Mr. Chairman, can I address your comments? Um, the Moserway piece that we're developing now was approved by the board in March of 2012. It actually took about six or seven years of work to get to that point. When we first started speaking to mass development, they asked us to uh, consider the construction of what were called mansion units at that point. And we did a lot of work around that, including some market survey work to determine whether there'd be an appetite for those. And what we found is that there was not. Uh, and that, subsequent to that, we, there was a change and we were invited to bid on some other types of housing which led us to, uh, to the project we have today. I think maybe at this point it might be helpful if I could ask Pat Goggins to come up and address the market because part of what we're seeing is, is, is the, the change in, is, is really we need to build something that, that people are going and willing to buy. And, uh, and that's you know, kind of a part of what we've, we've, what we've done today. Can I interject? Before you go down that road, I think maybe the discussion really has to be, because that sounds more like a special permit question about whether it makes sense to modify. So, I mean, that would be my recommendation anyway, mm -hmm. that instead of hearing about all the benefits of going to a single family detached with attached garages right next to it, which does eat up a lot more space and make it feel less dense, I think the you all should decide whether that question is on the table because it wasn't advertised as a special permit or if, um, it, you know, how you want to address that. I, I would also add that your city solicitor said that this was not a special permit issue. Because we, this, Carolyn had brought this issue up before. Actually, I think the city solicitor said the board would make the decision about whether it was a special permit issue and they could vote on it. They could vote on whether or not the site plan met the special permit criteria, and it was a board decision, not a staff decision. I, I think to me this just <coughs> feels like a special permit discussion. Everything we've talked about now isn't, isn't site plan is, is technical, and 
where the houses are, what type of house it is, what are the setbacks and so forth. We haven't talked about that. We're talking about high density versus single family, the original concept versus where we are today. And now I, I have some, a little remorse on, in, the, in the previous developments that maybe those were special permit discussions that we should have had that, didn't, that we didn't have. Um, and it just seems like more and more we're, we're, we're turning what was the village at Hospital Hill into a housing subdevelopment at Hospital Hill, mm -hmm. which was not the intent, which was not the pitch way back. Um, so to me, that put it together, that's a special permit discussion. Now, I'm not, now that's just my opinion, but I think, I think to bring this forward as a site plan review, it needs to come along either with the special permit or the special permit needs to come first to say, to see if we agree as a board whether or not um, this should move forward or not. I agree. Well, even as I listen to you describe, I mean, you know we've all, some more than others, I mean, I haven't caught this story in its beginning, but um, the conceptual plan argument, I'm sure you can see from our side of it that it's frustrating to think we had a plan and all of a sudden be told that, oh, it was from such an elevation that we, we were working on it. But when you went through just comparing the two, I get a difference of 11 compared to 26 when I go 3 to 16, 3 to 6, 2 to 4. Uh, understand, though, that this is already permitted. And understand, too, that you already permitted Upper Ridge, which was an increase in density from this. So I understand it's the, it's the elephant problem. It's, you know, we, we put a hand on it and we get a piece of an elephant and then we come back and we get another piece of it. And, and because, again, it does go back to this conceptual plan, which this plan is really the, the um, purview of the CAC. And in 2012, they approved an updated master plan um, because they saw, you know, that this building couldn't be used, that these roadway alignments didn't make sense. So it's really, it's really part of the special permit only in this iteration. Uh, well, I've been on the CAC since I've been on the planning board, so it's some 11 or 12 years. When the proposal on the right came up to the CAC, I actually voted against it because if anything was set in stone, it was Beth's opposition to showing anything other than all houses up there, all single family houses. So I voted against it, even though the CAC did pass it. And at some point, the CS CAC is largely a toothless tiger. It probably should be abolished. Uh, but it's not the kind of committee that we want to make, that have make these decisions, I don't think. Again, understand that by legislation, the CAC is the, the group that has the jurisdiction to make these decisions. And so that's, this, that's what's concerning me is because the planning board is kind of reaching into the CAC's jurisdiction with this. I just want to clarify that. The CAC has a separate jurisdiction to talk at the big elevation scale of master plan and how we're going to build out. We're going to have a mixed use village. The planning board absolutely has jurisdiction in the approval of the special permit to comply with the zoning that talks about what a village center is. And as part of a special permit, you necessarily have to approve a site plan. So this stood as the site plan that showed compliance with special permit criteria. So and I don't think it necessarily makes I don't think the discussion about density has to go number by number how many units were shown because I think that is more conceptual. I think the idea of attached units that necessarily mean slightly higher density and massing versus single family detached units is probably a more appropriate conversation as opposed to saying there are three lines on this block showing designating three units versus four units. So I just want to clarify that too is, is maybe something help, to help think about more of it in a concept um, as density versus lower single family detached density. But let me just point out though, if you, I don't believe that you can require a certain type of unit on a certain lot based on your, your permitting ability. But if you were to prefer townhomes, I think that's not as good a design solution as the, the Pecoy houses here. Um, because they come with a garage, you would have a garage either addressing the TCB building or 
addressing this roadway here, Mosher Street, with houses across the street. Um, and this lot here, you know, th this was kind of like an orphan lot that we didn't quite know what to do with, and, and you know, they, they put something there to show it. But this integrates both lots into an existing neighborhood, which I think is a, a nice urban design solution. Um, and if you're going to say, you know, townhomes here, you, you're not going to have that kind of thing. You're going to have the townhomes that don't relate to anything and cut off by a garage from its neighbors. I don't, I don't see how that's a better solution. I, I don't know that we're necessarily saying it's got to be a townhouse with a detached garage. I think we're just saying we have very little opportunity moving forward to have density in the, in the center of the campus because there's just not that many opportunities left with the parcels that remain. And if we have single family homes on these lots, then, then we've got almost no opportunity moving forward. And since we've gotten away from, if you look at the master plan, what the master plan was conceptually purporting to be, and what is being proposed tonight, those two, those two don't follow a lineal path. And it just seems like we've gotten away from that, so this, this should be a special permit request to say we've moved away a little, we want to go with single family detached, it's not density in the middle, it's single family, this is what the market demands. All those, quest all those conversations are special permit conversations. I disagree. I, I personally have no, really no objection to this site plan part of this thing, but I do think, feel that the special permit is a separate question and we should what's the big deal they can apply for a special permit and and I would I would probably vote for it I'm much more concerned with what happens um, north of Ford Crossing and that's a, a place that originally showed density along Ford Crossing mm -hmm. which we've already moved away from on the on the southern end yeah, I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing any more than, I mean, you can regret having Cole Morgan south of the of Route 66, and that certainly isn't anywhere near what was originally proposed. Correct. That doesn't mean we should just give up. No. On the other hand, I mean, overall, we have increased the density. We put the assisted living here as opposed to Special this big parking lot. We've taken the assisted living off this site and created more commercial space right on Route 66. So we've actually improved the density in this. But plan. every time you did that, I believe you came no. to us with a special permit request. No, no, we have not amended the special permit. The only amendment to the special permit was for, for Cole Morgan because that was a completely new idea for the South Campus. There wasn't a specific special permit amendment for the six lots, is that what she's, is that what mm -hmm. your question is? Mm -hmm. um, right, and there's a lot of discussion about, well, more density, it's okay, because the six units, more density could go on the north side, and then that was followed on the heels of the North Employees Home, you know, coming down and redrawing the map for marketing purposes that just showed lower density on the north. So none of that was, part of a special permit conversation. I understand that there's a cap on uh, <coughs> residential development that is set by the CAC. Um, and these plans work within that cap. There's certain commercial development that the CAC requires that's accommodated in this plan. Um, and we, you know, our, our goal is to build out this community according to the special plan vision of density, of walkability, of uh, the best utilization of the site that we can get. Um, and I mean, this site here is a good example because if you remember, we submitted it with Jonathan's building on lot 18, the gatehouse, and uh, lot 19 together at the same time because when we did the engineering studies, we found that the soils here had poor drainage. And so we submitted a drainage system 
which could serve both sites. And that's really what we do is we work our way through. The realities on the ground have to be taken into account when you actually want to get something built. Un understood. And I think along the way, we, you, you've made the argument that we, if we're talking about density, we call for density here. And we looked at the site. It's not great. But you know what? We're going to give you density over here. And Jonathan's building, we're going we're gonna to move things around. But it all falls within the framework of the original concept. And that we're moving kind of density around. But when, when we back up and we look at where we are today and what we have left to do, and the only thing I see moving forward is, is single family lots. And to me, we're just getting away from the village, away from the density in the middle. And I'm, ju I'm just repeating what I said before. Yeah, and I, I have to say, again, this is a concept. Uh, we've put <laughs> this out to, uh, for proposals uh, as a 35 acre parcel. And we've said, you can do up to 90 units here. What's shown is 46 single family houses. <coughs> we encourage density. We want density. The Pequoy development is dense. Those lots are 4,000 square feet. I mean, we had many developers who turned us down who didn't think it could be done. And if you go over there and you walk through that, it's a nice, walkable, dense neighborhood. Um, but we had to work hard to get this density in here. Um, and we think this is a perfect complement to it. And the density, it is selling though. It is. Yeah. Yeah. But I, and, I, and that's really a, tr a tribute to Pequoy to have the courage and the foresight to understand that, that this would work. No question. It just seems like up until maybe a development or two ago, we had room to, we had moving pieces and said, you know, if we can't get it here, we'll get it here, and we'll swap this piece for that piece, and we'll fill in this other piece, and slowly over time, we're, we've run out of pieces to move around, and we, I think we need those pieces to, to further explore the density question, or just come back for a special permit request, or we leave. So I, we can either reject, well, speaking of term, we did. If the board feels that this is a special permit question, we could reject the site plan, or we could leave it open, and, and have you file for special permit and have it kind of tag along and catch up. Yeah, I, I don't think right. we would file for special permit because we don't believe this is a special permit decision. Mr. Chairman, can I ask a question? Yeah, uh, your name? I'm Ken Pico, I'm a developer, uh, for the proposed developer for these projects, for these, for these lots. And I wasn't around when a special permit was originally um, done. So I guess my question is, what is the board's goal in, in terms of the density? What it, why is that such an issue? Because as a developer, I have to look at the, the marketability side of things, uh, as well as you know what what it is that I'm building. So I'm trying to understand where, where that's coming, where the question is coming. I don't, I don't think it was a goal as much as a it was a concept that was pitched and a, and approved, and because to me this is is just moving away from that concept that was, it's hard to approve this nebulous moving target, but that's all that we had. And so what is being presented today is, is not specifically, it doesn't go along with that, that special permit, um, doesn't fall under that special permit umbrella. And okay. just because of that, just black and white, it's, this isn't a site plan request. To me, it's a special permit request. So we just were putting the cart before the horse. I understand that, but how does the density apply to what's before you? I, I'm confused. Well, I might be able to answer that a little bit. The, the overall concept plan was to have a mix of housing types, a mix of affordability, and a mix of size. And the idea was, you know, you have more of a compact dense core, and from out uh, um, around that, your density gradually drops to integrate some of those um, lower density units and a mix of sizes at that level, too. And so the idea is, and, and there have been, um, obviously Wright has been able to market and sell, you know, um, now he's got three, uh, he's got apartment flats now that he's building that have <coughs> six units per building. Um, so there are different markets that um, are being addressed in terms of attached housing versus d detached. Um, so I think that's part of it. The other part of it is, is the affordability and the more that we move away from smaller units um, onto larger detached lots, we're moving away from that affordability 
um, issue, which is also a big goal, and written into the permit, actually, and, I mean, the zoning, actually, to make sure that the village is a mix of people the way Northampton has over time become mixed that way. Let me just point Seems out that. Just, I think you've easily, I think the project is easily meeting the affordability threshold or the requirements of 50%, isn't it? Yes. Go ahead. Um, and I just wanted to point out that you're, you know, it's, we could have them put that one unit back in here, move the pathway over, and then you'd have four and four. It's, you, you're, the townhome does not necessarily equate to more affordable. Uh, in Upper Ridge, Jonathan has 16 townhomes approved, and some of those are going for more than 350. Is there's nothing that, you know, says that a certain unit type is more affordable or more dense. I mean, we, we've shown you in, in this little handout that you could do townhomes here, but you'd only get about four units in that way. So, um, and I'm, I'm just pretty clear that if, if, if density is the issue, we've maximized the density um, in this area by putting two more units here, which weren't contemplated. Um, and these units here, I, I mean, I really don't think you should impinge on the path by putting in another lot there. I think we're, we're staying close to the original idea of density. I guess that's my concern and my question. Density and affordability don't necessarily run hand in hand. And by definition, you, you've already achieved that up there. You have some townhouses up there. You have some townhouses already there. All we're doing, our proposal is just responding to what the market is, and it's a continuation of the existing neighborhood that we've got up there. So, uh, I'm, I'm, forgive me, but I'm just a little bit perplexed by the question. So, but I wasn't part of the original plan. So I'm trying to understand where you're coming from. If it's density, that's one quest, That's one. That's one uh, issue. If it's affordability, that's another issue because they don't necessarily. I, I, I don't think that's either of the discussions. I think is does this match the original? Special permit. And I, the I, discussion I, seems to be centered around density, and that's that's where I'm getting. It is because the special permit. That's what the special permit required was density in the at the core, and then single family along the perimeter. And we, we're, we're just going in circles here, talking about the same thing over and over. Yeah, but I and that's why I think it's important to understand that this is in the special permit as a concept plan, knowing that it would change that once the engineering on the ground was done, and so it was never literal. Um, and we're saying that we, we're pretty much achieving the same density, but having done the engineering on these lots, it could, it could not support six units in any, in any form. It just, the lot is not big enough. So it's not a special permit issue. This is a concept plan. Once you do the engineering, you realize that that lot couldn't have supported six units of any kind. It's not that we're trying to decrease the density. It's that the actual conditions there can only support four units. Any comments from that point? Um, I agree. We're just going in circles at this point, so mm -hmm. we need to find a way to move forward. I know that's not terribly constructive. Would it be of any help, um, I'm Pat Coggins, would it be of any help to uh, provide some sense of uh, the marketplace out there and, and the evolution of the project? And I, I, know, I know what you're trying to mm -hmm. Achieve in terms of the of the uh, of your uh, expectations, but the worst thing it seems to me. I, I think Pat, hold on. I think I think this discussion that you're about to launch into is is a special permit discussion. I agree. If you, if we're coming tonight for a site plan review, site plan amendment, that should be black and white, cut and dry. And nothing we've talked about tonight is black and white, cut and dry. And so, what the market conditions would bear. What, what is selling today, what is marketable today. Um, that's, we're, we're just getting away from a site plan amendment. That's, that's none of that a site plan discussion. Um, site plan discussion is this is what the house is going to look like, this is where it's going to go, this is how tall it's going to be, this is what the setbacks are going to be. Uh, not how much it's going to cost to build and, and, and what the market out there can bear. Um, so I don't know that this would, is a discussion we need to have. Mark, how do I find myself in a site plan discussion tied to a plan that wasn't 
tied down. Isn't that the sort of crux of the That's problem? That's very much the crux of the problem. That is always the problem yeah. with every single one of them. So I'll, I think I'll... Can we fix that? I'm, I'm just questioning myself. Can I fix that history here? Uh, you know, I don't... I mean, I think I'm back to my elephant story. A lot of the elephant is sitting up there already. And if, it, if we're sitting here uh, saying, how come we didn't get where we wanted to go, I, I don't have that history to say the very, you know, Frandy's so much older than me, he's got 12 years <laughs> on it. But Frandy's older than everybody. So. But I, I do feel a little frustrated in that I think at the core of the problem, we can't go backwards. Correct. And so. Um, well, the idea was that this, this stood as the site plan because in a special permit process, you all have to approve a site plan. Since they weren't ready to build out all the different parts of Village Hill, this stood in its place as a site plan, and the idea was once these pieces come together, you'll see the details of them. And so it necessarily, because of the way the zoning set up, this has to sit as the site plan, or the special permit plan and the related site plan, and, and then the amendments will come in and address those details. So yes, it's um, not something that's typical you see a very detailed site plan at the time a special permit is proposed normally but given that this is a 15-year build out and there were lots of unknowns you know the special permit to create the village was first approved and the idea was to create this to allow a special permit to create this village and so where what, what does the village look like that this illustrious site plan says here's what the village will look like they'll you know with these different cores and even as the discussion has moved forward about modifications and tweaking here and there it's always sort of come back to um, a dense core along those two spines that you know originally the road network didn't even look like that but at, but the idea still um, was maintained to have those um, dense core that dense core I just want to follow up on what you said, Mark, about, you know, maybe we should have asked for a special, we should have required special permit in the past. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's probably right. But the fact that we haven't in the past does not mean that we shouldn't start thinking about that now right. as the project moves further and further away from what I certainly envision this project would be. I, I, we can't fix what the past, but we can adjust the future. I mean, not adjust it, but, but maintain, I think, what was originally intended and and to me this is getting away from that and I and I think as the you move away from that core and you're back to what conceptually was was pitched and that's less density in the on perimeter single-family homes that all makes sense and so moving forward I don't I don't I see very little reason to have anything but a site plan discussion but we're not there yet we're still in this little core we have very li little core left to discuss and to me that's if we can have that discussion, we should. And, and right now, if that's what was intended to be there, or as we understood it, that's what was intended to be there, and what's being presented tonight isn't that, then that should be a special permit, not a site plan. I would just say that, well, with all due respect, these two small little pieces of property are not going to solve your density problem. We're talking plus or minus one unit. So to go through a special permit process, for plus or minus one unit. With all due respect, is it I un understood. I look at these two pieces of land and we look at them from many different perspectives. You know, mass development does, we do. We all want to maximize density. We all want to do the right thing in the end. Uh, I don't see how a special permit process is going to change the outcome. Of these and, and maybe that's the case, but, but that doesn't negate the fact that this should understood. be a special permit request. Once again, we can, yeah. we can go through the, the, the semantics of this, but at the end, we're talking about two very small parcels of land here. Uh, understood. Fran, are you going to say something? Well, I, looking at the big picture, this really is a pretty small change. It's an incremental change. Mm -hmm. I have absolutely no objection to it myself. And over the years, I mean, the, the Hospital Hill or whatever you want, Village Hill has been successful far beyond what I expected to have been accomplished by now. And part of it is the result of being flexible and, and taking into account that the fact the original, original plans, the, the architect or designer or what, whatever, thought the whole land was flat and had all kinds of developments taking place on, on uh, you know, 20, 30% grades and stuff like that. 
So, frankly, I think we ought to, I don't know, sound like a traitor to you. Sorry. No, I mean, maybe if that's, uh, do But we I think we ought to just grant it. And we can, you know, then we can, I mean, we could also say that in the future we're going to have to divine, you know, demand a special permit. Well, if we agree tonight that this is a site plan discussion, then we can just move forward with the, the presentation. The question of the density. Given that what goes one way or the other with this isn't going to really alter the density, if we want the density to be altered at this stage of the game, what do we do to make sure that the density is where we thought it should be? But if, if that's what we want, what do we do to make that happen? I don't know if it, by default, that's what we want. I think what we want is the, for the master plan to be adhered to, and the master plan called for higher density. But if we don't care about the higher density, then we then we need to reposition the whole master uh, attempt to reposition the, the whole master plan. We don't care about the density. But if we do, well, my question was, what what would be your putting this aside right now? What would be the step that would be taken if you wanted to affirm and see that that density got proceeded? Because if we don't know what it is, then then we have a different question to talk about. Well, I think all along we, did, we didn't know what was coming around the corner for this whole development, and that's what made it hard to... I guess that. You know. but I, think, I think the other thing is sort of that slow erosion. So the original master plan that was put in the, that was approved is on the left. And on the right, for marketing purposes, what have you, a lot of that density is gone. So I hear that. So, you know, at some point, um, you know, the illustration of what was originally approved as a site plan is not matching up with that exactly a site plan. So you need to make that determination about whether or not that's a big enough shift to adjust. But and, the question is, what is. do you do? That's, but that's, that's what I'm saying. That, I think that's, that, would, that was my recommendation is then you need to have that conversation about a in the context of a special permit amendment, you know, it's advertised. The whole conversation is, well, you know, maybe maybe this density here isn't isn't the right way to go because, for marketing purposes, it's just not working. And and you know, we want to go, go ahead, hurry up, and get this finished and built out. And at this moment in time, the market's not supporting what the master plan or what the site plan associated with the original um, special permit looks like. So, can I offer a comment here? Is the adaptation of, of special permitting for a change of use going forward really a legal issue? And shouldn't that be asked of the solicitor by the board uh, going forward? And maybe that answers the question that was posed over here. What's the protocol going forward? I think it's pretty clear the planning board has a jurisdiction to determine whether or not this is constitutes um, compliance with a special permit and whether or not an amendment is required. Um, so I, I want to just point out again that the special permit calls this a concept master plan and acknowledges that it will be amended from time to time by the CAC. It acknowledges that. And as Ken pointed out, we're talking the difference of maybe one or two units that doesn't seem to be to rise to the level of special permit amendment. <coughs> Given that the special <coughs> permit called this a concept plan and understood that things would shift. Are you trying to say something? I don't have a clear grasp of the density that you were talking about before I got here. But it seems like to me, rather than a core center, what we have there now is a spine. You've got the commercial business down on, on the main road. You've got the nursing home. You've got some dense development but it's not the way you originally envisioned it in a sort of donut village shape. But I think that's gone. I mean, it looks like to me that I don't, I don't know where you would f fix that now. What would you do? That's so that's the, you know, I, 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 I know we've all got such history with this, and I'm trying to back up and say, but these houses, I'm probably in alignment with Prandy, that these are, that this, this is not the fix except for maybe the process. I mean, I think that's where our conversation ought to be is 
um, what's to be gained in exercising the special permit option now for this piece, these five units, as opposed to let's really get our head about what we really want this to happen in the future and see in an in independent discussion of what what are the options that we could do <coughs> practically with what's left available. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I agree with everything you just said, but that's, a, again, a special permit discussion. So I think procedurally, that, that which is all I'm talking about, right at the very beginning, the question was, why is this a site plan review amendment and not a special permit amendment? It's a, just a procedural question because it's a bigger picture question. And if we get into special permit and the answer is the market won't allow it, this is what we need to build, it's, it's, we're talking about one unit doesn't make, in the big picture, doesn't make sense, that might all be perfectly true. But that's a, that's a different, that's not a site plan discussion. And so, and, may, and, and maybe take a straw poll and, and if this, if, if we're all fine with this as being a site plan discussion and we move forward tonight, then I'm okay with that. I'm just saying, I think procedurally, this should be a special permit. You, you referred to it as a site plan amendment. It's just really just site, site plan, plan, site plan, period. correct, sorry. Can I ask, I mean, coming into this new, so, a little ignorant about the history and and maybe even the definition of if there's an absolute to what we're defining as dense because it seems like we're talking about a relative question how dense is it but it still is dense and so is there a line that we've crossed or that that is being crossed that is making this not dense no and and that's that's been the problem all along because there was it was it was a concept it was a moving target it was a blank slate and over time it's been filled in and now over time we've had the ability to kind of step back and compare that to the original concept and it seems like we're just trending a little bit away from that original concept and this might be an opportunity just to stop and say is this the discussion we're supposed to be having if it is that's fine if not if if it should be a special permit big picture question to make sure we're all on the same page and this is okay that we're moving a little away from the original tent, but everyone's good with that, then that's fine. But that's not a site plan discussion, it's very technical, it just there's not a lot of discussion with that. Generally, <coughs> you want to go first, right? I was, was going to say, generally, the site plan only looks at is this a suitable. Uh, is a suitable uh, use for this location. That's that's what a site. I mean, that's what a special, special permit. Department. I was going to say, right? I'm sorry. I get it. Uh, they both have SP in the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a special permit is is this a suitable uh, use for the for the land? And I, they certainly meet that. And I think it's reasonably close to the original concept. And a concept, the original concept that's 10 or 20 years old, certainly is going to need modification. Mm -hmm. I'm just, there's, you know, we got to be flexible, you got to be pragmatic about it. I think we've been flexible and pragmatic every time something has come in front of us. And we have moved that's further. Put into that, right? And we, we've, we've moved for, I've always said this, I've been very vocal about it. We have moved further and further and further away from what the original concept was. This is not anything about like what I've envisioned. There's no workforce housing that we talked about. There is no village in Village Hill. There's no, there's almost no commercial development. There's a one building with Fazzy in it. That's it. And Cole Morgan, which, you know, is another thing entirely. And um, you know, I think I think we've gotten so accustomed to bending and flex and being flexible in ways that I have always found distasteful. And this is just, you know, this is just another one of those. And I, you know, it's an opportunity to stop, to stop doing that. But you are, I mean, the point is that we have done that in pieces, but we have done it with site plan. All the, I mean, all of a sudden we're saying, no, now we're going to do something different. And I'm thinking if, if we really were going to get the benefit out of making that sort of change, I think we had to have done it, drawn the conceptual plan out for what it wasn't early on. But I see most of the village is built now. But is that a reason to throw up our hands and just give up on the whole thing? No. But I think it, this may not be the proper, this may not be the one to take, to do it on. I don't see this, 
the opportunities to do these two lots, you know, these two parcels, mm -hmm. much differently is I, I don't see it. So that being said, you think the discussion tonight isn't a special permit discussion; it's a site plan review as presented. Mm -hmm. So the idea is when you look at a site plan that it's the site plan also has to be consistent and compliant with this overall special permit that was approved. So I think that's what you're saying. Uh, yeah. I think we all know what we're saying. The special permit that we approved has been a moving target. And so you can't turn around now and say if it didn't match the special permit, then we can't just do site plan because we've been doing site plan against that special permit all along. I think at each stage you approve the site plan based on your belief that it's still consistent with the with the site plan and so there may be a point at which it's moved far enough it away. with our fingers crossed that that low-income housing would show up and that that worker housing that Jen was talking about would well, show up even even the bungalows at one point the discussion was would those would that be workforce living or would that be affordable housing and the argument was well the square footage is going, to be, is going to be so small that by default it would be affordable housing. But as we've seen, that's not the case at all. They're selling well, but they're selling expensive. They're, it's not, it's certainly not workforce living. And so that was, it just seemed like another opportunity lost, big picture wise, moving away from where we thought we were headed. And by its, you know, in a bubble, it's, 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 come out great and and the houses look lovely and it's very walkable and manageable and everything's great but I, I it just seems like now we have an opportunity where maybe we should have done that before to step back and just compare what's being requested versus what where we started and if the two match move forward if they don't it's a special <coughs> permit request let, let me point out too that the affordability goals are the province of the CAC they are not uh, part of the special permit um, and the uh, work, the what the CAC called market rate affordable. These are the market rate affordable, and 350 was the uh, <coughs> price that the CAC agreed to. Um, so that is carrying out that affordability goal. Um, we yeah, have this discussion again. Um, these these two TCB buildings are um, 33 units, uh, and of those. 26 are affordable, so it's a 80% affordability in these two units, and these are uh, affordable to people making 60% of the median income. These okay, let's, I think we're we're. But I, I just I understand what you're that, saying, but yeah. But we're we're just getting way off on what. On what well, along those lines, you're well, talking about. I don't and think <laughs> we're getting that far off because it's, everybody's talking about the affordability. The affordability overall up there is five times what's required in the city. I mean, and or affordability advocates keep wanting to make it more, and I don't think that we need to do that. And I don't even think it needs to be part of the discussion as long as we're meeting the CAC's goals. I, th I think the discussion should be, we should come back to its core and procedurally, should we move forward with a site plan review or uh, keep the hearing open and ask for a special permit to be submitted or reject the site plan and start over with a special permit request. Yeah, you should do it. Hmm? yeah. So, so as, so as not to have the discussion, uh, I want to do just raise your hands. If you think this is a site plan issue and we can move forward and hear the presentation and move forward with that under that umbrella, site plan review, then raise your hand. <coughs> Well, that doesn't help much. <laughs> so three up, three down. Well, I will try asking the other question first because... Um, if you think this is a special permit, this should be a special permit amendment because what is being requested moves away from the conceptual special permit plan that was initially pitched and approved. Then raise your hand. <laughs> it's predictable. I think my frustration is I'm not sure this is the I, I do think we need to decide how to move forward but I'm not sure that this particular piece of work is what we ought to draw the line in the sand over I agree I agree 
But then the next time we're going right. to be in the same position. Mass well, development does the same thing the before the every next time. time. We have to do it before the next time. We don't wait for the next time. Otherwise, you're absolutely right. We'll get the same pitch that we always get. Well, yeah, I get that. But if we at least we should have the discussion and and work it through without these five pieces of these five houses being the. There is no other context, though. You can't. The, right. the city can't initiate a special permit amendment. It has to be the applicant in the context of a project. So this would be the venue that you would make the determination whether or not the plan in front of you is consistent with the approved special permit. And if it is, then move forward with the site plan review. If not, then pull back, have the bigger conversation about special permit. Maybe it does. Maybe it makes sense with all the rationale about special permit. It's just that's not the question that's before you is not a special permit question, it's a site plan. So this is the, the venue in which it would take place. And, and I would submit that this is not a special permit because this and this are not that different than this and this and certainly are covered in the idea of a concept versus an actual plan. It's the same use. I'm not changing my mind. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I don't know how to move this forward. We just we keep circling so around. We can we can listen to the presentation and then take a vote on the presentation. And can I ask yeah. Carolyn a question? Sure. Go back to what you just spoke about. Yeah. Is it not possible for us to move this property to to do what we have previously done, which is approve a site plan? That's what we've done in the past for each piece of this property. Mm -hmm. But then before the next one comes up go back and review the differences between this conceptual plan and the actual that we have arrived at a decade later and see if if we have if we're, we're so far off that we can't get any if, if we want density define what that is and if we you know if we want uh, for what's left in the property to transmit a message to mass development and the developers that are coming that Yes, here's what's going to happen next time. It's going to be a special permit. Okay, that's the piece that I don't get. And I think we're in the same boat thinking let's... It, it just seems like there's very little core of the village left for the next time. That's you know, true, the but these five pieces gonna aren't going to make any this, difference. Yeah, My isn't elephant really isn't going to look either. different. And, and that might be 100% accurate, but that's... Again, it's, it's just a, to me. It's just a black and white procedural issue. This isn't a this isn't a site plan discussion special permit. So so for me, I, I, I'm with Jen. I don't I don't feel hearing the presentation on on the development for these parcels. I don't think that will change my procedural. Oh, you know my 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 thought on the procedural question. Because even if I love it and I think it's great, I still think this is a special permit question. <coughs> So I would be in favor of, of if we're going to go through the presentation and have a hearing and have three up, three down and not get anywhere, to keep the keep this open and if the applicant wants to file a special permit and let it catch up. I think we'd prefer to have a rejection from the board uh, because we believe we have a legal precedent here uh, based on the past history of the board. Change. Yes. Presentation. Yeah. So move forward then with the presentation. <coughs> Once we move, well, what, what about the concept that you can't really reject a site plan? You can only condition it. You can reject a site plan mm. if it doesn't meet the special permit oh, okay. criteria. Okay. I mean, if it doesn't meet the approved I mean, I, special permit for the, if it doesn't meet the plan for Village Hill, it's, it's, you can reject it. And so that's the question. That was originally the question if you all don't feel that that's you know that it I mean if you feel that it does meet it you can approve the site plan well I see the writing on the wall here they're not going to do the special permit because they don't want to be in a position any time in the future to have to do that yeah I, I don't think this is the time to draw the line in the sand don't you I think don't it's think interesting it's how much they're pushing back <laughs> don't you think there's a reason <laughs> I mean, I think that this is an important. Yeah, it's because we're being a pain in the butt. <laughs> this is, well, we've given mass development every single thing on a silver platter. I'm not mass development's biggest fan, but I think in this case, it's clearly oh, darn a reasonable thing to bring. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> darn. 
You know, in spite of all of that conversation, this project has been a, an incredible success, and that is due to your flexibility as a planning board and mass development's commitment. As a developer coming in at the tail end of this or at this phase of it, you know, I'm thrilled to be a part of it. But it, you know, it has been a success due to the flexibility that you've offered. Uh, once again, I, I get at some point you've got to draw the line in the sand. I just question whether this is the place to do it because it, the, 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 um, in the end, I don't see any radical change here. You're not going to fix the problems that have existed uh, if there are, in fact, problems in the past on these two small little parcels of land. So. Yeah, and our point is that what we're proposing is consistent Exactly. But that would have to be the argument that, that right. it is consistent and it's not trying to fix. I mean, any kind of requirement for a special permit amendment isn't saying, wait a second, we're going to fix that. So, you know, if someone was going to try to file a legal claim against the planning board, it isn't going to be based on the fact that you're trying to fix something, some bad things that were done or some things that you didn't feel comfortable with in the past. It's about whether or not you felt like it was consistent with the, with the approved um, special permit. So that that those are the questions that you would be making a determination about. And so conceptually, <coughs> there were six in the early plan, and now there are five. I wouldn't say you base it on numbers. I think it's the the massing, the type of housing, the presentation on the street. As you know, this was sort of the line of higher density housing and then across the alley is when you start the detached accessory units for, uh, you know, to put it as simply as possible. So I don't think, again, it's about counting up the number of units. If they, a four, an attached four unit townhouse is, is um, you know, more condensed and uses less land, obviously, and fits on the parcel and it backs up to four single family detached units. So you know, just because it doesn't match the six units on the property isn't what <coughs> I would suggest makes it, it makes or breaks it. I think it's really the type of housing and the way. Well, I'm thinking of the in. connected housing right down the street. I mean, how many, how, what's the density of that, of those buildings? So, so the separate townhouses with garages doesn't get us anywhere. But, but there is the, the, at the end of, <coughs> can you tell me, Beth, what the ones I'm thinking about as I turn the corner at? Um, there are four units of each of these buildings. <coughs> and lot-wise, how does that amount of ground under those units compare to the lot sizes you're looking at? Well, you can see this. I think it's a tough argument when it's a continuation of an existing neighborhood with an existing product um, to turn against that. It's not like this is totally different. Mm. No, but I'm talking about the, the, the buildings adjacent to it to, to right. the east. I mean, it's... No, no, I understand, but, it, but it's in keeping with what's presently so being done This is there. apartments, too. You don't have to provide garages when you build apartments. The market demands that you provide garages when you build townhomes. So we're three up and three down. Do we want to hear the presentation on the <coughs> on the build out and then and then take a vote if if the applicant prefers that we do that. Why don't we hear that? And then I'll do that if I can get Devin to change your mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe after the presentation we will. So why don't we move forward then with the presentation? Thank you. For the site plan part of the discussion, I'd like to introduce Eric Bernard, who will walk us through the, the specifics of the lots. Should I put it down low? Up front? Up high? Um, maybe yeah, to the side of the easel, I guess, just so the not in front of the camera and we can see it. No public here, right? <laughs> well, but they're filming it. They're filming it, so. Yeah. Making sure that, uh, that that was available. Okay. No, no, Good I evening, everybody. Thank you. Um, Eric Bernard and Simmons. And now there's nobody back there that has to see it. Matt. 
Eric Bernard with Boston O'Neill and uh, representing lots A22 and A27, uh, the extension to uh, the existing village uh, subdivision on Moser Street. And so what we've proposed here this evening is to take lot A22, uh, subdivide it. There's a separate uh, ANR filing that goes with the site plan. Subdivide A22 into two lots and divide A27 into three lots to support the traditional neighborhood development. Uh, not quite a bungalow, but a small uh, urban setting home. Consistent with the uh, product type from Village Hill, uh, there are five units being shown with garages. Lot A27 uh, with the three lots, uh, as mentioned in the previous discussion, we kept the uh, walking path uh, connectivity there in place. And we're now showing the three units with garages with accesses uh, coming off the alleyway uh, to the back. <coughs> The houses themselves front on Musanti Drive. They all have porches um, consistent uh, with the former product or the past product that's been proposed. Um, and on the corner of Moser and Musanti, the one corner lot is a little bit different because the, the width and the side street setback don't allow the garage to front on Moser. It doesn't fit uh, within this within the distance required for garage set back off the street. The garage is actually sort of behind the unit um, and fronts onto Musante. The grading in this area is uh, fairly flat on Moser and Musante, so this probably um, not a lot of topographic difference between the two roads, but over coming down off of Ford Crossing, uh, the first unit is pulled back a little bit because it's about a three foot height differential between Ford Crossing and that first unit um, as you come down the hill from the grade. The utilities uh, are stubbed out on Moser Street and Musanti uh, because there is only one stub um, on the lot A27. We're showing bringing the uh, utilities to each individual lot um, consistent with DPW's request. We did get a letter from Carolyn Ford late with some comments from DPW which have some minor adjustments that we have no um, uh, that we're in agreement with or have no comments on. And then I think lastly, landscaping. And we're showing a, a continuation of, of some street trees which are really uh, creating a Alley, the alleyway and providing a little bit of screening. We're providing some screening and some sort of formation plantings for the walkway. Um, and then there is some rear yard screening at the back of these two lots as they head closer to the um, more commercial area of the site. That's a basic run through on the, on the units. 
Yep. Yeah. Um, if the garages were placed in the back in the alleyway instead of side by side, wouldn't that couldn't you increase density that way? Um, okay. So if we took the garage and put the garage in the back of the house, mm -hmm. uh, we're required to have two parking spaces per unit. And so the garages and the bylaw in the village is that the garages need to be 20 feet off of the street line or the property line. There's so no parking requirement, actually, in plan. Two per unit? A maximum of two. Uh, then it's the design guideline for mass development that asks for two per unit. But we do have the differential that you can't get the garage too close to the roadway. But so now that you know there's no requirement, they could be moved to the back to increase density? They could, it could be reworked? Um, no, because the design guidelines by mass developments, which are part of the restrictions on the lots, require us to put the garages 20 feet back from the roadway or the access way. So the design guidelines are part of the special permit. Right. From the, but this is the alley, though. There's not. There's a setback from a, a private alley in your design guideline. It's from. And it's a design the guideline. Property line or the street line. So we considered that back property line. Um, the back property line here is not. If you wanted to do that, you would have to make the property the center line of the street, which is sometimes popular to do when you do an alleyway, traditional neighborhood development. In this particular case, the property line is in fact the rear yard line. So it doesn't leave us a lot of flexibility with that setback. So the edge of the alley is the rear lot line. And so you're saying if you move the, if you slid the house forward and had more room in the rear for a garage coming right off the alley, you're saying there's a <coughs> setback issue from the alley? There is also a setback from the back side of the sidewalk or the property line again in the design guidelines for mass development so that the houses are placed um, well they're not all placed but because of their it's a trapezoidal shapes but the one in the corner is placed as close to the front property line as possible you still need 20 feet in front of a garage door right but i'm talking about instead of sliding them back this unit over here it is, could be slid forward I'm not sure if you could get 20 feet, but I know in these two units, you couldn't get 20 feet because of the overall length of the, of the lots, or the depth, long, long axis. These three identical houses? The lots, the layouts, and the, and I'll, I should have you address the actual, but the footprint of the lots, the maximum build out and sizes are the same, but the actual housing units. The actual houses are, everything that we're currently offering up in Village Hill would be offered here as well. So that these are just building envelopes that are conceptual. The market determines what goes there. The outside, you're just, what you're showing us is the equivalent of the basement if there were a basement in terms of the footprint. Yes, the maximum yes. footprint yeah. that would go on the site. Yeah. What are these being marketed at? They start well, currently everything up at Village Hill starts at that we're doing starts on low three hundreds. And has anything sold for the low three hundreds? No, that the market is not responding to that and that is somewhat frustrating. Because we're offering that product. To your point, we're offering that product and the, and the market is not there. Are you saying that they ought to be cheaper or they ought to be more expensive? I'm saying that we're building to what the market is, is, is asking for. We're offering product in the low 300s. Yeah. And the, what, what's, it's, it's a very good question. What's happening here is people are coming in and are buying a smaller home and they're appointing it much nicer. So uh -huh. that's kind of, kind of where we see the trend is developers going anyway. People aren't interested in the big McMansions anymore, but that doesn't mean they don't want a, small, not a very nice home. They're much happier, or they're happier, just as happy to, to, to take a smaller home and make the interior of it much nicer. So we've seen that in repetition up here. Notwithstanding the fact that we're into the lots now that we believe are gonna be more price driven. 
the lots on the rim were a little bit different. Mm -hmm. the, the, you know, those sites were a little bit different. That's why I say the density and affordability don't go hand in hand, necessarily go hand in hand. It is a market driven thing. As developers, we're not trying to build the most expensive home. We're responding to the market. So I just want to clarify, there are no setback requirements in the PV because that was changed sort of midstream, so um, from rear, side, or front. So um, uh, if that, that is a question. Okay. Did you have a question, Ian, or no? Mm -mm. Uh, there's no public here. I guess, or is there any public that wants to ask a question? No. Okay. Um, so, discussion? I mean, I, I think the units as described are, are fine, or are nice. Um, but it, de it didn't change my opinion of the kind of almost like a massing. That initial, when Beth had the original conceptual drawing was, was really kind of a massing diagram of this is where we think things should be. And if you kind of blur your eyes and step back, the massing in the center was heavy, dense, and then you had single family units around the room. And to me, single family units that close to the core is a departure from that original plan. So that's a different discussion for me than the one we're having tonight. It's a discussion of should that be the case or should it not? And if it is, then that then if it is, then I think this would be fine. Um, but I think before we can get to this point, it's a special permit discussion. I think this is an opportunity to check ourselves to compare where we are, where we thought we were headed, to where we are going. And that's all those are all special permit discussions. And do you feel like there's enough of the project left to make much of a difference? I don't know that there is, but I don't think that should change us. That should matter. I, th I think, to be honest, we got what you could almost see coming where, because we never saw the whole, we saw moving parts where we thought we wanted it to go, and now we've stepped back and we realize it hasn't really gone that way. And so do we just stop and say, well, made a good effort but we didn't do it or should we try to hold on to the last couple moving pieces that we have in that core and say let's have that discussion let's have that special permit discussion and if the if the answer from that discussion is there's not a lot we're going to change here so let it go then that's fine but we haven't had that discussion and to me that's that's the discussion we should be having for these parcels If we had, if we, it seems like we did have that. I know we didn't have it in the context of a submittal, but we've had that discussion and we're sort of in a, in a deadlock. So what is the procedure for sort of moving through this? Is we just continue until somebody gives, somebody gives <laughs> or do we table it until we get another person in or is there a, if we vote now, it's if the vote stays the way it was, it's 3-3, three, three, and so it, the, it doesn't pass. doesn't but, pass, okay. But the discussion, I, I, um, I don't agree entirely that that's the discussion we've had. The discussion I'm trying to have is just a procedural question, discussion. That's it. And if we move past that and discuss, are these the right homes? Do these look good? Is this development? That, to me, is an entirely different discussion. And whether these work or not, um, within the context of it, their neighboring houses and so forth, that's, it's, that's a different discussion. That's not the one I'm trying to have. The one I'm trying to have is right out of the gate, the very first question that Beth asked, answered was, why is this a site plan review and not a special permit? That's the only discussion I, I want to have. Okay. Make a, a motion to close the public hearing. Sorry. Second. Second. Deb, all in favor? Okay. So we've talked this through <laughs> 15 times, back and forward, and back again. Um, did was did the presentation change anyone's mind? Well, now that we've closed public hearing, can we we cannot leave 
to leave it open, right? I mean, that's we just took the step that would not have allowed us to just stop. Which no, no, you can continue. You can. You don't have to make a decision tonight if that's what you're asking. That's what I'm asking. If we had to leave public hearing open to do that. No, no public hearings closed, but you can certainly, you know, wait until your next meeting if you want to take a vote. It doesn't happen all the time, but you're, you certainly have the ability to do that. You don't have to issue a decision right away. Yeah, Why would you want to wait? Strict guidelines about you can't discuss it outside of the public. Right. Why would you, would, were you interested in waiting, or are you just asking? I'm interested in the 3-3 the three, three split and where that puts us. Oh, I mean, I, my feeling is I think we just have to vote, right? I mean, I don't think there's any other, anything else we can do. I, I, I admire the, the profiles and courage approach to this thing, but I just don't think this is the place for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's a it's perfectly really reasonable admire. proposal. <laughs> it's, it's essentially, it is the same use as is proposed under the special permit conditions, and it's, 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 all, you know, it's a little bit short of the rubber stamp process, but I drive through there every week or two because I live out that way and the, the, it's not going to change how proud I feel about my involvement in the I agree I think it's a beautiful development I think I <coughs> tell people about it I ask them to, to drive through it I, I think it's great but I just think it would be an opportunity lost if I think by itself again it's fine and, and by these parcels itself it probably meets the special permit but taken as a whole which is a special permit kind of discussion taken as a whole we're moving away and we have an opportunity to if not get back at least kind of self-correct or take a take a moment and and compare to where we thought we we're going to where we are can, can I ask if we were to go through and um go through the special permit process and we came to this to the conclusion that yes it needs to be more dense what would that mean would it, would it mean one it? more I, I, unit I think in it's there just, it's just a mass to me it's a that, that question which is different than the procedural question the the, the more density to me is, is a massing yeah. single family detached is not is is not townhouse is not apartment mm -hmm. complex is not it's just a massing it's just the feel that you get when the feel that's all that we could approve way back when was kind of a conceptual feel was that density in the middle and and single family in the perimeter and the feel is lost if you have more single family closer to the core i, th I think the four thousand square foot lots is pretty damn dense yeah it's like row houses or or i don't see it going away from but single family houses are not as dense as, like Mark just said, as townhouses or apartments. It's just, I mean, it's the least dense, but it's the least dense yeah, structure. I mean, I, right, but one acre lots was never conceptually yeah. the, the, the goal for the master plan was one acre lots in the no, but middle. It used to be sort of the goal for the city. So we got all this sprawl. Oh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I, am, I, mean, I am a little bit disturbed that it shows all the private houses north of Ford Crossing. And I would like to see that somehow addressed. But, you know, we live in a real world, and, and I don't think we necessarily have to base all our decisions on what some idealists thought up many, many years ago. We have to, it, it's a real, I think we have to be pragmatic, and I think that this is a perfectly deserving project. And it should, we should just approve it. If we were to not approve it, and we were to go back and have a discussion, do you believe that there's any reason to think that we're in a position to c create an environment where greater density would occur on what is left? That's a good question. I think if, if <coughs> and, and, that, and that comes back to the like Devin said, you know, touching a piece of the elephant every time and not having the ability to see the, the whole picture. We've never had that ability. And so Is there a way to get that I don't ability? Think there is a way to get that. But I think I think conceptually it would be um, less likely to have density to the north where the north building was and headed out in that direction than it would at its core. And if conceptually we're supposed to have density at its core and then 
and then it, it lessens as you get to the perimeter, then our, then our yeah. density focus should be where in the core, with what we have left in the core, and which is very little, but. This, this is it, this is the only thing that's that left in the core. So put your badge of courage on. Pardon? <laughs> what? So put your badge of courage on. <laughs> Sorry, I missed that when you remarked. It's the last. I mean, this is our last. This, you know, this is one of our last yeah. hurrahs. If you don't think that this matches what the original plan had in, had in store for this, then now's the time. No, I think it matches fine. Okay. Then make a motion. So we're ready to vote. Can I ask? From is it? Is there? Uh, is abstention a, a possibility on a vote or no? It's possible, but it counts as a no. Okay. You lose the badge of courage that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the worst vote. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have. Um. My conundrum here is I don't know that I, I can get what I want. I mean, I think we all know what we want. We'd love to have a dense apartment complex sort of split between these two lots and call it, you know, the density in the core that we wanted. But I can't make that happen. I mean, I can only say yes or no once it's proposed to me. I agree. I agree with all of that. And to me, we can't have that discussion tonight because the discussion tonight was site plan, not special permit. And if it came forward as a special permit, we'd have that discussion. And whichever way it went, I'd be good with that. But that's not, the applicant was, it was presented as a site plan. And everything you just said, which I agree with 100%, is not a site plan discussion. But also we don't, I mean, like you said, we don't know whether we can get more density here or not. It has not been presented to us. Um, and, you know, people, developers have different goals than we do. That's perfectly fine and appropriate. But we are not, we are not charged with, you know, trying to meet the market demands. That's not what what Hospital Hill was ever about. Um, so. Oh, I think that was in the back of everybody's mind. Not mine. This is a really special piece of property. I mean, this is a once in a lifetime thing for us. This is not a subdivision out on oh, Route 66. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's a great discussion to have, and we should have it, and we should come at it from every angle, but that's not the discussion for tonight. So, somebody want to offer up another opinion or put this thing to vote? Brandy, you're going to put on your badge of courage? Put on my white hat here. I don't think you had a white hat. <laughs> I move that we approve the site plan proposed by the Pequoy Group of five single family house lots on Musanti Drive, Northampton map IDs 38A-135 and 31C-35. Second, anyone? Second. Second, Anne. All in favor? <laughs> three to three. Three to three, different three to three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I do all I do all four going after you coming and oh that was the gave me kind of kind of uh that was a really interesting, I mean, the, the, that, that was a good one to start with. <laughs> that last discussion was what nailed it. Mm -hmm. So, this is, it is the question. It's a procedural. That's all it is to me. It's just purely procedural. Yeah, this was a little too much like the old planning board meetings of old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't bode well for me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they were quick until you showed up then. They were like 15, 20 minutes. It's true. Do we have anything else? Well, it just depends <laughs> no. if you want to move on to that stuff. You want to leave that for January? <laughs> want to take okay. a holiday break? And the end of the no. <laughs> no, you have to be in it for that URA discussion.
do. I just don't see where it's going. Wait a minute. We do have a meeting on the 26th. Valuable. I don't see something. Yeah, you can come. We have to articulate very much. I think. Uh, let me just double check. Sorry. Well, the night is a Wednesday. Yeah, is specifically up for that. Um, <laughs> that I mean, I wasn't part of Yeah, it is a night. Um, out of you. Actually, what's what? And I know we have zoning. Board. I don't recall a planning board. This is going on. So maybe that's a good day to yeah. tackle all this yeah. stuff. Yeah, all the loose stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like that. The, when are the, the January map. meetings? Uh, the ninth. The ninth. Somehow I couldn't figure out how to be third. Down at the No, I'm here. It was like it needed a legal opinion. Um, yeah. No, the interview. Well, and that's you know, Thank you for asking. Legal opinion. But I don't think I'm going to miss a meeting. Did you say Stevens at the brewery? Pardon? Did you say Stevens at the brewery? It's a legal opinion yeah. to tell us whether she I'll, was I'll right. And that's what's going to happen. So are we, is there anything? That because happened? that's what they're going to do. Second. So I think we didn't they're going to do. Okay. Yep. Aye. 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 Aye.